What if I told you that breast cancer risk might be reduced by as much as 39%? Can you believe that? How about if I told you that this massive reduction in breast cancer risk was actually accomplished with hormone replacement therapy in a major study of about 1,268 patients? I'm Steve Goldring from simplehormones.com. I help patients and healthcare practitioners with easy to understand patient education resources. Most of those resources are about hormones and hormone optimization with a special emphasis on menopause. Well, today's topic is a prospective observational study called the Dayton Study. In the Dayton study, the design was prospective, meaning uh, we're looking forward. It was also observational. They followed these patients for about 10 years, which is a pretty long period of time, mainly looking at breast cancer outcomes. They gave women in menopause testosterone pellets implanted under the skin. Those women had no estrogen or any other type of hormone replacement therapy interventions. And there was also no placebo arm of the study. There was basically just patients taking the testosterone. Patients with a history of breast cancer were given something called anastrozole, which is an aromatase inhibitor that's designed to block the production of estrogen from the testosterone. The results of the study were interesting, and to be expected, 85% of the women who took testosterone had increased facial hair, and about 6% had what are called severe increased facial hair episodes. About 11% reported acne, and about 50% had improvements in their skin, in their wrinkles, and skin moisture, skin texture, dryness. About 1% had voice issues, including a cracking voice like a 12-year-old boy, and uh, some also had some serious voice deepening issues. And that's a topic that I'm kind of personally familiar with. I know personally a professional singer who, because she was accidentally taking a high dose of testosterone and her voice was cracking and she was getting a deepening of a voice that was, that was really quite uh, upsetting to her. But once uh, she figured out that it was the, the testosterone dose that was causing a problem, she was able to reduce the dose and the, the voice problems went away. So this is not an unprecedented side effect of testosterone. So one thing to recognize about the Dayton study is that testosterone levels start out pretty high because of the pellets. A, a common criticism of pellet therapy is that the doses tend to be somewhat high. So normal testosterone levels in women of childbearing age might be around 100 nanograms per milliliter. Kind of that's the high. Levels that were measured in the study, they started out at about 300 nanograms per milliliter four weeks after implantation, and they were still at 171 after four months. So those are pretty high in comparison to normal female levels. Since there was no placebo in the study, testosterone-treated patients were kind of compared over 10 years with what are called age-matched controls in the SEER database. S-E-E-R stands for Surveillance, Epidemiology, and End Results. That's a program of the National Cancer Institute. It's basically government statistics about the incidence of all types of cancer. Well, the conclusion of the study talked about the SEER database, which calculates the rate of breast cancer at about 271 cases per 100,000 women. In the study, though, women taking testosterone, there were 165 cases of breast cancer per 100,000 patients based on the patients taking testosterone after five years. So that's a 39% reduced rate of breast cancer over 10 years compared to the SEER database. There are a few caveats and sort of criticisms about the study. The first is that researchers were sort of scared to death of estrogen. This is a, a personal criticism that I have of the study. Sentence two in the introduction to the study says, it is well recognized that estrogen and progestin stimulate breast tissue and increase the incidence of breast cancer. I 100% completely disagree with that statement. That statement's based entirely on a misinterpretation of the Women's Health Initiative, which I've covered in lots of other videos. Because of this sort of fear of estrogens, the study also included, as I've mentioned, this aromatase inhibitor. It's something that blocks estrogen in some patients. 
There's also a strong possibility of something called healthy user bias in patients who are willing to get testosterone and hormone replacement implants and patients who are concerned about their breast cancer risk. The SEER breast cancer rates are based on everybody in the general population, which may not really be a fair comparison to these patients who might have a healthy bias, healthy user bias. Those patients with a healthy user bias may smoke less, they may eat a better diet, they may watch their weight more closely, they may sleep better, they may get more exercise. So in some ways it may be unfair to compare them to the general population where we all know that people in the general population don't always do the best as far as their own health is concerned. Women could or maybe should be taking estradiol and progesterone to help with menopause symptoms. Things like weight gain and hot flashes and vaginal dryness and insomnia. It's a little bit unclear how taking estradiol and progesterone along with that testosterone might affect the results of this testosterone-only study. The take-home lesson from the study is that while this study is informative, it's not exactly a slam dunk. It does, though, give a pretty good hint that testosterone for women is safe and has a real potential to possibly prevent breast cancer. If you're interested in finding help with testosterone, well, your primary care provider or your OBGYN might be willing to prescribe testosterone for you, but the chances of that, frankly, aren't all that great. Instead, here's what I'd suggest. Find a hormone optimization specialist. That's somebody who really knows what they're doing with hormones and hormone optimization. A hormone specialist will have experience with testosterone specifically for women. They'll understand what it means to test your testosterone and how to know whether you need testosterone or not. They'll have some options of how to prescribe it. Maybe some pellets, maybe a gel, maybe even a vaginal form of testosterone. If a provider tells you that you need to use a man's testosterone product and take like a tenth of a dose, that's definitely not something that I would ever recommend. And it's also probably not something that any hormone specialist would ever recommend. A hormone specialist will understand the side effects and the possible pitfalls of testosterone. They'll also know exactly what to do to help you navigate the whole world of hormone optimization and help you eliminate all your menopause symptoms and reduce your health risks at the same time. Click the link on this video that says find a provider. I'll help you look for somebody in your area who has the experience and training to know what to do with testosterone and all your other hormones. If this video has been helpful at all, click the like and subscribe buttons and maybe ding the little bell to make sure you don't miss a new video that I post. Thanks so much for watching and I'll look forward to talking to you again next time.